In today's episode, we're talking about making an affordable handheld arcade system. Don't go anywhere. Today I'm talking about making an affordable handheld arcade system. Now you may remember this from a couple weeks ago and you saw all the work and fine materials that went into this and the craftsmanship and it was so much money that no one could afford it it was cost prohibitive to mass produce. That said I wanted to revisit this and make something more affordable in a kit form that you can download or you can purchase from our store, support the channel and build it yourself. Now you could take all of the project files that were created in Fusion 360 for this and 3D print it and you'd have something that looks relatively fine but it still got way too many parts and it wasn't designed for efficiency. So in order to do that, we had to step back, redesign a lot of stuff in Fusion 360 to come up with something that still looks great and is easy to produce. Let's jump over into Autodesk and check that out. All right, so check out the new design. It looks a little bit different, but much more sleek and it actually accommodates the ergonomics a little bit better. It looks reminiscent to some other handhelds on the market. It's got uh, 10 buttons on the face. It's got the acrylic marquee blackout bezel. It's also got shoulder buttons that makes it easy to uh, use for multiple emulator systems. All right, so let's hide some of this acrylic and dig into some of the interchanges. So to do that, we'll hide the front face. We'll also hide the marquee. And once you see that, you see that everything's nicely positioned. We have a speaker positioned with a port directly behind the speaker grill. The LCD has a nice placement and support system. Behind here, you can see the Raspberry Pi peeking through there. All of the ports on the Raspberry Pi are exposed through the backside. There's also a, a power switch located right there. If we zoom into the controls, the controls are milled out of Delrin plastic. And underneath the controls, you can see the soft buttons. Those are the momentary switches switches that are enabled by the controller buttons when they're pressed. The cool thing about this that differs significantly from the other design is that rather than having circuit boards for your D-pad and your options and your ABXY buttons, now they're part of a unibody assembly, which means there's little sockets that those components can slide right into. It makes the assembly of this almost plug and play. It's very easy and there's minimal soldering requirements. Now if we zoom out, flip it over and look at the backside, the backside has acrylic which has also been removed and you can see how the components fit in here. The Raspberry Pi is front and center which exposes the HDMI mini port as well as the two USBs. In addition to that we have standoffs for the common components that are leveraged in a standard build such as the PowerBoost 1000 and a mono amplifier to power the speaker. On the right hand side you also see there's a battery. It's a 2000 milliamp battery but there's plenty of room for you to play with to add additional components as well as space for cooling. In addition to the electrical component mounting, you see that the shoulder pads have their buttons mounted in there in a snap together format. It's really easy to assemble and you can see the pins come up through the backside of the unibody to where you'll solder wires which run directly to the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi. When we look at the rear acrylic, the additional ventilation in conjunction with a heat sink on the Raspberry Pi Zero processor will improve the characteristics of this build. So now that we've reviewed the major changes, let's export this main unibody and get it 3D printed. All right, so now that we've got the new design created, exported to the slicer and uploaded to Octoprint, let's push these over to the 3D printer and get them printed out. All right, so now that we got the bodies all 3D printed, they turned out great. We've got standoffs for all the circuit boards, the surface finish is great. We even got sockets for the components as we mentioned in the design, which will allow it for easy assembly and minimal need for any circuit boards. So the next step is really to prepare the controls and the controls will be milled out on the Nomad 883. In order to do that, we'll probably gang them up and connect them all so that it's easier to mill out of the Delrin plastic. So let's hop over into Fusion 360, generate tool paths and get these things milled. Alright, 
So to mill these out on the Nomad 883, I'm just using a 1 16th inch carbide two flute flat end mill. It's gonna be straightforward because we ganged it all up in Fusion 360. So let's get these parts milled out. So we've almost got all the parts prepared. We've got all the controls milled out of the Nomad 883. We've got the bodies printed from the 3D printer. Next thing we need are the acrylic face and rear panels. Now to do that, we're gonna run over to Fusion 360, export the sketches as DXF files, and from those DXF files, we'll be able to cut them out directly on the laser. Let's run through that process real quick. So now we're pretty much good to go. We've milled out the controls on the Nomad. We 3D printed the enclosure that's got all of the standoffs for all of the stock electronic components that go into it. We also laser cut our face, applied our marquee, and laser cut the rear panel, which is opaque and has a nice little lasered logo on there. So that said, we're good to go. I'm not gonna run through the details of actually soldering up each of the components, but I will show you how they pop all right into place and makes that process really simple. We'll save all of the details and how it specifically gets wired up for a later video, but for now let's run through this process. So that's all there is to it. Aside from soldering the wires to the Raspberry Pi, it's a breeze to install all of this. You just install the controls on the front acrylic interface, drop those momentary switches in the sockets of the main unibody, flip it over, and then mount all of your electronics, standard electronics from Adafruit on the standoffs, as well as uh, install and wire up the remaining components to the Raspberry Pi. Once you do that, it's just a matter of programming the Raspberry Pi, installing RetroPi, emulation station, or whatever system you use. Um, in addition, to uh, having the, the acrylic opaque back interface. We've got ventilation around the Raspberry Pi to improve the thermal dynamics of the enclosure. Um, we've got laser engraved logo, which is the Arcader Solo, and everything else looks great. We've got the speaker aligned to the front speaker grill, so all of your audio comes out really nice. Shoulder buttons, 10 buttons on the front. What more could you ask for? Cheap and available. So this is an inexpensive kit. It's going to be available on the store. Go over there, support the channel, pick one up, and make your RetroPie Arcade handheld look great. Now this is the black and white model. It also comes in an all black model where this main unibody is black. The buttons are all black, milled out of black Delrin, of course. That said, that's all we're going to cover today. You know, we just want to review this new enclosure and let you know that it's available at the store for purchase. We'll have kits in varying levels, so we're going to sell just the acrylic laser cut pieces so that you can print your own body if you like. We're also going to sell the full body, which has the buttons, the acrylic, the body, and you can provide your own electronics, or I'll even supply the entire kit with all the electronics that you can assemble yourself. Now currently we're not going to do the fully assembled model as of yet. It's just too time consuming for the manufacturing and all the soldering that goes into it. And, and plus that's what you enjoy, right? Is putting it together and actually customizing it to suit your own needs. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoy the enclosure and let me know any feedback you have and how we can improve it and make it better for you. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. See ya. Oh, by the way, check out my, um, yeah.